the American citizens are paying for these wars that they do not believe in or want. We, we go to the gas station. We can't afford gas. We go to the grocery store. Dude, the average American's paying like $9,000 more to, to live than they were just two years ago. And like, dude, we're paying for this. Shit. We don't want these people are completely, and I'm not talking Democrats. I'm talking all of them. They're completely off the reservation and out of touch with what the American people want. And everybody should remember this come election time, not just for the presidential election, but for, for all everyone. Of them. For yeah. All what is up, guys? It's Andy for selling. This is the show for the realists say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society. And welcome to modern reality, guys. Today we have Andy and DJ Cruz the internet. That's what we're going to do. CTI, that's what it stands for, Cruise the Internet. We're going to put topics up on the screen. We're going to speculate on what's true and what's not true. And then we're going to talk about how we, the people, have to solve these problems that these dumbasses create in our society. All right. Other times on the show, we have shows within the show. We have Q&AF. That's where you ask questions and we give you the answers. Questions can be about anything, personal development, uh, business, entrepreneurship, what's going on in the world. Typically, we like it about personal development, how to make you guys better, because that's part of the equation here, how we're going to make the world a better place. Uh, you could submit those questions a couple different ways. The first way is, guys, you can email those questions in to askandy at andyforsella.com. Or you go on YouTube in the comments section of the Q&A F episodes, drop your question in the comments, and we'll pick some from there as well. Other times, we have real talk. Real talk is just five to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. We do audio exclusive real talks. We're going to do one of those tomorrow for you, so... Uh, Tune in on Saturday on audio exclusive. Get that little heat. Uh, and then we have 75 hard verses. 75 hard verses is uh, where someone who has completed the 75 hard program, which is the initial phase of the live hard program, comes on the show, talks about how their life was in disarray before they did the program and how they got it online and are kicking ass. And then we talk about how you can do the same. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Live Hard and 75 Hard, you can get the whole program for free at episode 208. It is the world's most popular transformative mental program in history. All right. There is also a book on this, the book on mental toughness. And you can get that book on my website, andyforsella.com. It, it encompasses the whole Live Hard program, ups and downs, lefts and rights, nuts and bolts, gives you all the details. If you're like me, you'll love it because I have to know all the details before I do things. Uh, but it's unnecessary. You don't have to buy it. You can just get the program for free at episode 208. The book also includes 10 chapters on mental toughness, why it's important, how to cultivate it, how to use it in your life, along with some case studies on some very famous people, how they used it to become the very famous people that you recognize. Now, we don't run ads on the show. We have this thing called the fee. Um, we say pay the fee. That doesn't mean give us money, uh, although we will take it. Uh, but what it does mean is that, you know, support what we got going on. Uh, I finance the show myself. I don't want to be told what I can and can't say. Um, for that reason, I just ask very simply that you support us and you spread the word. And um, we're constantly battling censorship, shadow bans. Uh, we're dealing with some of that on yesterday's episode. Um, and we ask very simply that if you like the message, if you think it's important, if it gets you better, if it makes you think, makes you laugh, gives you a new perspective, is something that you think is important that you please help us out and share the show. So don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? Nothing, dude. Yeah, I got a little special one. We do got a special yeah. one. We got our good buddy, Will Bates, here. What's happening, brother? Hey, how you guys doing? Thanks good. For me. Yeah, man. So if you guys don't know Will, Will has a, a very popular Instagram account, uh, Will Be Inspired. That's correct, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, Will Be Inspired. You guys should follow him. He does some amazing content on what's going on in the world. Uh, it's it's good fun, it's but hilarious. it's also educational. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny, man. I appreciate um, it. Thank you very much. He also happens to be uh, fucking swole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, bro. The first time I met Will, I met you up at, at, uh, at, at, yeah, at the gym up here in, in Gravoy Bluffs. Absolutely. And I was like, damn. He's a big dude. Yeah. A big fucking dude. How tall are you, bro? 6'4". Yeah, 6'4". That's it? Yep, six four. And will you walk around when you're not dieting for a show? Right around two sixty five, two seventy. Yeah. Good just lord, fucking yeah. ripped and jacked, <laughs> just fucking beast, yo, yeah, yeah extra tan. <laughs> extra tan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. So what's good, man? Not much. Uh, just getting ready for this show uh, next Saturday. I'm do the NPC Midwest. 
and uh, got some events coming up with the nonprofit. Uh, we'll be inspired Warriors Fitness Fund. We have a golf tournament coming up May thirteenth, and then uh, we're gonna do some fun things over the summer as well. So, so what what is that? Dive into that a little bit because that that's that's your nonprofit that you run for for veterans, right? Correct. It's uh, military veterans, first responders, active military, and their families. Um, we help with fitness memberships, mental health counseling. Um, just kind of anything to support or assist mentally and physically um, to help with PTSD, depression, stress, anxiety, um, and things like that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's that awesome. is awesome. Now, how long have you been doing your tournament? The tournament we started back in, so this is the third annual, so we started it uh, back in 21. Two? 21? 21? Yeah. Yep. That's awesome, yep. dude. So 21, 22. Well, yeah. cool. Actually, I'm sorry, 22. Yep, 22 was the first year. So we started the – the foundation in 21 and then 22 was the first golf tournament. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, man. Father, husband, just all around badass. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah, right. I love it. I love it. And, and he's like, you know, he, he thinks outside the box. Yeah. Which that, box? That, that they can find us too. Right. Who's us? <laughs> <laughs> What you? What do you mean, we yeah. people? Us, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, man. Uh, no, awesome dude, man. Um, awesome, awesome dude. Glad I to have you here, that. brother. Um, well, you guys want to do some cruising? Yeah. yeah. Let's get it. Uh, you want to get into it? <laughs> Let's get All right, it. All right, well, so before we get to our headlines, I saw this video, um, and I just thought it was it was perfect. Uh, it kind of encompasses what we need right now in America. And uh, what's what's really, really important, we talk about unity a lot on this show, and I think it's very, very important. And so I wanted to play this clip because I think it just embodies exactly what we need right now. Um, and there, 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 there's, it gets a little deeper, too, um, specifically about who, uh, who shared this video. But let, let, here's the clip. Can't we all just get along at the Red House Furniture? We, we can. can. At the Red House. I'm Richard, a.k.a. Big Head. I work at the Red House, and I'm black. I like pumping iron and pumping furniture into people's homes. I'm Johnny, a.k.a. Ten Gauge. I work at the Red House, and I'm white. I like deer hunting, bass fishing, and extending credit to all people. At the Red House. I'm black, and I love the Red House. I'm white, and I love the Red House. I'm a black woman and I love the Red House. I am white and the Red House is for me. At the Red House. Who made this? <laughs> this is real. <laughs> this is a real commercial. Look at the sofa. It's perfect for a black person or a white person. Oh, nice. <laughs> this mattress is perfect for a white person or a black person. At the Red House, where black people and white people buy furniture. And Hispanic people, too. <laughs> you can't forget the Hispanic people. <laughs> That's a real commercial. Oh, dude. That's, That's a real commercial, but now they got to give the white people the... the... At the Red House. <laughs> Why we got to do that? Why we do that? They could have spiced it up a little bit Why, more. They gave us they gave us white people the, the two cheesiest parts. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, it is what it is, man. Yeah. You know, I was dying on his uh, his little handshake where he's shaking that little. <laughs> Bro, it was so fucking <laughs> awkward. <laughs> it's so awkward, but it's, it, it is. It, that's a real commercial. I, I, I was able to fact check. I it. like yeah. hunting and fishing, and bass fishing. Yeah, <laughs> they call me Ten Gauge. Right. <laughs> It's got to be a community service program. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. Now, the, the, the interesting thing, though, is who shared this, uh, who, who shared this. And, and, you know, it is from a couple of weeks ago. Um, but Snoop Dogg shared this. He's the one okay. that shared this on his Instagram um, with the caption, just get along. And I thought that was interesting. I thought that was cool to see coming out of uh, left field there. Um, he does seem like he's coming around. He's to, coming around a little bit. To more unity stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like I remember when he dropped that that uh, you know fuck fuck Donald Trump song or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like you see that, and it's just like, dude, like to be so influential, you know, and like that's what you choose to influence, yeah. you know. But but yeah, it definitely is. Uh, he, he's definitely coming around. And the comments were were overwhelmingly uh, very very good. This this commercial single handedly ended racism. <laughs> Um, yeah, with the, that's the most popular com or one of the most popular comments. Yeah, this other one. I'm glad they included us Hispanics. I would love to lay on a couch like that. 
Yeah, uh, man. I thought it was because we, we do need unity right now, man, and we need to get back to shit like this. Bro, I don't think that that's. I don't think that that's not how it is. Mm-hmm. Like when you go out in the real world, everybody's cool and everybody's looking at each other. Like, can you believe these dickheads are trying to make everybody hate each other? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't. I don't know. I don't see any of this weird shit in real life other than on the internet or on TV. Yeah, We're I mean, want us to see it? Yeah, I mean, you know, occasionally, but you're talking about what? one percent less than one percent of the time you'll see some some fucked up shit like you know maybe if you're a police officer you see more of it but the reality is man i think most people are on the same page most people are cool they they want to stop getting robbed of their taxes and stop being artificially divided and you know divided along racial lines or economic lines or religion lines like bro nobody's with that shit Mm -hmm. absolutely and that's why this shit is so funny and people like it so much because they're like yeah that's that's some good shit, you know? And that's the good part about humor, too, bro. Humor is universal, mm-hmm. you know? And for a long time, you know, humor was... I, I, these young guys don't, don't remember this, bro. Like, if you go back to the 80s and 90s, fucking everything was game, bro. Everybody talked shit on everybody. Everybody made fun of each other, and it was funny. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know... They they ended desegregation in the schools and started making gave it twenty times. years and called everybody racist and now fucking everybody's weird. Mm, yeah. You know? It's <laughs> like, dude, we already fucking this is not a deal. Right. Yeah. You know? Well what, 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 what's your look on this? Because how, how old are you, Will? I'm thirty nine. Thirty nine. You're about the same age, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean what have you seen what 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 have you noticed the most, I guess, with with just society when it comes to racial I tension, I think I think it's like he's saying it's like uh, everybody's cool until they get on the internet, and then like you're oppressed or you're offended, you're this, you're that, like, and that's what bothers me about people that I know in real life that you know we'll be at the gym or we went to school, and we didn't have no issues with people at all, like live good lives and had great friendships, but then on the internet, everybody is against you, mm-hmm. everybody's doing this, everybody's doing that, and you're just a victim of this and that, and then you go go back to real life, see you at the g- gym or wherever, and like, oh, hey, what's going on, what's going on, everything, and it's just like, <laughs> hey, bro, you how, you can't have it both ways. No. <laughs> like, yeah. either, you, either you're a victim or you're not, like, it's like, what, what's, what's the deal? But, you know, obviously, you know, there's people that want us fighting amongst each other, so they perpetuate these things online or in the media all the time. I, I'll take it back to when I was in, uh, like, middle school, I'd watch certain movies like American History X mm-hmm. every once in a while or Rosewood or whatever, which two movies I probably should have been watching or whatever. But yeah, not, not in middle school. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, but high, high racial tensions and stuff like that. And every time I saw movies like this, I would it make you angry. It yeah. triggers emotional response, um, which certain things are designed to. So it's like, I think they're just putting certain things out there to trigger these emotional responses to get people riled up and against each other. But day to day basis, people actually get along without the nonsense that they keep putting or pushing. Yeah, it's interesting. You don't see, you don't ever see, you don't ever see white on white crime on the internet and you don't ever see black on black crime on the internet. Every single time they show these incidents, if we're paying attention. It's white on black or black on white. That's right. And it's designed to stir everybody's emotions and get everybody pissed off. And dude, when you think of the millions of videos of millions of crimes that are out there like literally every week and it just so happens that it's always the same story. You know, I, I think people have caught on to it. You know, I think the first, um, you know, when George Floyd happened, you know, I think a lot of people were emotionally charged and that really stirred up a lot of shit. And I think as time has gone on, people have started to realize, Oh, this wasn't exactly what we thought it was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we saw guys like Snoop Dogg and these other main guys saying some, you know, divisive shit that, you know, they're starting, I think they're starting to realize like, Hey, uh, you know, this isn't, we're falling for a play here. You know, it's not a, it's, it's not reality on an everyday scenario, you know? Yeah. We just need a to get, we got to become more like the red house. That's all, huh? I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, well, sweet man, let's get into this cruise. I mean, what do you think, dude? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I would like to start seeing, you know, what we know is true in reality to overwhelm the internet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like more of this shit, you know, more, more like post this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like let, let's let's show online what it's like in reality. That's what I would like to see. Dude, I think humor sense. is the key, bro. Yeah. I think comedians are gonna save yeah. the world. 
Like the content you make, yeah. how you make it like in a funny way. Scramby mm-hmm. eggs. Yeah, dude, that <laughs> <laughs> that's the stuff. That's the stuff that is gonna make people like say, Yeah, this is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And well, I get I get I get a lot of comments saying like you, you know, thank God and somebody saying it and stuff like that. And it's just it's awesome. It's so many people that, you know, agree with you but they don't wanna share put it on their page. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They don't want to say it themselves and everything. We're like, Yeah, I feel the same way, this, this and mm-hmm. that and, you know, but yeah, it's, uh, if people would if people would say that publicly, we would solve a lot of these problems, man. Absolutely, yeah, one hundred percent, man. <laughs> well, uh, let's get into this cruise then, guys. Remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyfasella dot com. You guys can find them link there. Uh, with that being said, number one, uh, let's just do a little world global temperature check. Maybe. Okay. All right. Headline number one. We got a couple of things to go through here. First things up is nine one one call services. Mysteriously go down in four states at the same time, hours before ABC reported DHS is concerned emergency services are target for cyber attack. Um, so this is uh, th- this comes out. Yeah. So so DHS released a bulletin saying that emergency services were being targeted for cyber attack, and then a few hours after that bulletin goes out, you got four states um, whose nine one one emergency systems go down. Um, the states were South Dakota. Uh, Nebraska, Nevada, and also Texas. Um, now, it's so interesting how they try to cover stuff up. Um, but you let's let's roll over to CNN. Uh, they released this headline that says nine one one service provider Lumen blames nine one one outage on installation of light pole. <laughs> Just one light pole. <laughs> Two, one light pole. <laughs> one light pole. <laughs> For four states. Four states. <laughs> four states. Yeah, one light pole. <laughs> uh, and they even admit that in the article how, like, yeah, I mean, this doesn't make sense, but that's what we're going with. Right. Um, the article reads, the outage of 911 system in several states Wednesday evening was caused by the installation of a light pole, according to Lumen, a company that supports some of those systems. Quote, on April 17th, some customers in Nevada, South Dakota, and Nebraska experienced an outage due to a third-party company installing a light pole, unrelated to our services. Lumen Global Issues Director uh, Mark Molzen told CNN Thursday morning. Um, an outage was also reported in a fourth state, Texas. Molzen said Lumen, a networking company that provides enhanced 911 services to local communities in multiple states, does not provide 911 services in Texas. So how is that affected? So wait, doesn't make sense. They're fucking lying. Um, you know, but criminals but, taking out light poles and stuff. That's <laughs> what it is. Yes, yeah, that's what it is. You, it's it's nationalist. That's what it is. It's fucking white people. That's what it is. That's what it is. Fucking, I'm so fucking tired of white I'm, people. Listen, I'm, I've had it up to here with it. Me too. Yeah. Um, that's seasoned chicken. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gross. Um, fucking smell like bologna. Yeah, yeah. Hot dog water. That's that's the actual clone. It's hot dog water. Uh, <laughs> no, but you know it, it's it's interesting. So I mean, that, you know, I saw this. You know, I saw this when it came out last night. You know, um, it was it was interesting. There still was not much of this come out. I think the timing of everything is a little interesting. Um, but but maybe maybe a little bit more to more more to come on that one. Um, other things checking in on the global stage. Uh, Israel. They aborted their plan to carry out a retaliatory uh, strike on Iran. Um, Netanyahu decided not to proceed following a discussion with Biden. I'm not sure what the discussion was, but I'm sure it had something to do with money. Um, either aid packages being held or some type of something going on there. But it is interesting why the, the all stop was uh, was given and the no go no, no go signal was given. Um you know, Iran did launch more than 300 drones and missiles over the weekend um, in an unprecedented attack on Israel. And uh, Biden told Netanyahu to, 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 to know. And so I'm sure it has something to do with aid packages, um, which let's talk about aid packages here for a second. Um, House GOP erupts into name calling and fresh threats to Johnson over effort to pass aid. So right now there's a single bill measure going on to put more money in Ukraine, right? And everybody's kind of up in arms, of course, because nobody wants more money to go to Ukraine. Um, this is CNN's article. Um, they're actually trying to uh, to threaten Mike Johnson, the speaker, to step down, uh, threaten that they're going to kick him out of his position if he tries to push this through, because um, for whatever reason, he's kind of flagship in this effort. 
Uh, Right-wing lawmakers are ramping up their threats to remove Speaker Mike Johnson from his role after Johnson's supporters pushed him to make it harder to oust him from the speakership. Uh, CNN and other articles reported Thursday morning that according to multiple GOP sources, Johnson is being lobbied by his members to raise the threshold required to trigger the procedure to oust the speaker. Um, So they're really trying to get him out right now with that um, because of this bill um, that they're trying to pass to give more money to Ukraine. Um, Now, Major Taylor Green, she just uh, put in some some new amendment suggestions to this bill. Why do you always call her Majorie? What is it? It's Marjorie. Marjorie. Oh, see that R in there? Or for the J? Oh, yeah. Well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, they fuck up my name all the time. <laughs> that's because your name is like Davioni. Right. Yeah. Right. Isn't that what it is? Majory. Yeah. The, the R is silent. R is silent. That's what it is. Davioni Oni. Yeah. Marjorie. Okay. I'm sorry, MTG. Uh, but she put in amendments uh, in this bill. Uh, that members who vote for the aid would have to go conscript to the Ukrainian army. I like that. Yeah, I like it. Absolutely. I, I think that's how it should be. Yeah, 100%. That's how it should you be. For kids, too. War, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene has introduced an amendment to a foreign aid bill to require members of Congress who vote in favor for of providing aid to Ukraine to join the country's military. The Republican Georgia Congresswoman proposed amendments to the long negotiated foreign aid bills for Ukraine and Israel on Wednesday night after House Speaker Mike Johnson told representatives that they would vote on three separate bills. A further bill is being put forward by the Indo Pacific region, including military funding for Taiwan. Green, uh, who has long argued against providing any further funding to Ukraine, introduced three amendments to the Ukraine Security Supplemental Appropriations Act. One of her amendments states that, quote, any member of Congress who votes in favor of this act shall be required to constrict in the Ukrainian military. So might get passed, might not. I don't know. But that's how it fucking should be. Absolutely. Dude, I agree, man. You know, these people send other people's children to die, you know, for these wars that don't end up meaning anything. that end up just making them a whole bunch of money and taking a whole bunch of money out of our pockets, which is double salt in the wound, right? You take their kids and you take their money and you make them poor. And these people are out of control, dude. They're running wild. They're they're out of control. They they are drunk on their own power. And there needs to be some some constraints and limitations. And maybe if something like this were to happen, they'd think twice about having to go to war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that should be for any any war. I agree. Yeah, not just funding it, but like any conflict that we get into. Yeah, nobody supports this, man. Nobody supports yeah. this, man. Nobody. Nobody. Go, go back a few uh, a few slides. Oh, the Netanyahu conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that didn't just have to do with money. I think it also had to do with, you know, Joe Biden's in a very unique position right now because a lot of his leftist base is pro Palestine. So they got themselves twisted up a lot right now, you yeah, know? Yeah. And um it's it's interesting and I don't think they can navigate out of it at this point in time. You know? So you know, I, I don't think those like, do you see any of these pro-Palestine people voting for Biden? No, I don't think so either. No, no. I don't think they'll vote for Trump, but I just think they probably won't vote. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. It, it, it is such a it's so interesting how the left always finds themselves in these like. Uh, now, like, I think a lot of pro-Palestine people will vote for Trump. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Which would. Might be kind of weird because he's very he's pro Israel, but you know it's going to be interesting. I think Biden's got himself in a in a in a pretty big bind with his own with his. I own. would say I mean like I would say yeah Trump's pro Israel, but I also don't think that means he's like anti Palestine. You know what I'm saying? He still doesn't believe that they should be fucking. Trump's up. policy says he's pro humanity. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Like, that one interview where he said I'm tired of people dying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're like, exactly. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm not this that. I'm tired of seeing people die. I'm tired of paying for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, people—that's the other thing people don't. People forget too. Like, you know, all those those drones and all of those missiles that Iran just fired. Guess who? Get, guess who's? Guess who bought that shit? Oh yeah, dude, we did. We are from <laughs> that was from that six billion that's right. dollars, bro. That's right. You remember that, Elliot Davis? You paid for it. You paid <laughs> for it. Bro. Like, that's our shit. Yeah. And then we're also paying for the fucking shit to shoot the shit down. So yeah, it's like, right, right. We're paying for it, Americans. Like, the American citizen are paying for these wars that they do not believe in or want. 
And then, and then they, we go to the gas station. We can't afford gas. We go to the grocery store. Dude, the average American's paying like $9,000 more to, to live than they were just two years ago. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And like, dude, we're paying for this shit that we don't want. These people are completely, and I'm not talking Democrats. I'm talking all of them. They're completely off the reservation and out of touch with what the American people want. And everybody should remember this come election time, not just for the presidential election, but for, for all everyone. Of them. For yeah. all of them. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's fucking stupid. Um, yeah, guys, jump in on the conversation. Let us know what you guys think down in the Yeah, comments. I want to know. How many of you guys think, like legitimately, tell me, how many of you guys think that we should be paying for these wars out of our tax dollars at all? How many of you guys think that your tax dollars should be sent overseas for any reason at all, considering the shape of our own country? I'm, I'm, please let me know, because I would like to get a temperature check on that. Right, yeah, that's real shit, man. <clears throat> well, speaking of the comments, let's go cruise some. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got some good ones today. Oh, do we? Yeah, we do. All right. Uh, this first comment uh, <laughs> comes from at I am DC322. OK, uh, he says, uh, I'll be honest, some of this issue talk about is too toxic to listen to early in the morning. But do you, bro? Uh, and then one of our <laughs> listeners replied and listen at night. <laughs> <laughs> I love our listeners. That's fucking dude. Great. <laughs> They're so fucking funny. That dude. is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Respectful. Yeah, bro. Hey, listen, nobody's begging you to listen. Man. <laughs> right. I'm not I'm not twisting your arm, man. You didn't decline my invite. I don't really right. care if you listen or not listen. But here's the thing I will say to you, bro. As 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 frustrating as it is for you to listen to, it's ten times more frustrating to have to come in here for me being where I'm at in my life and have to talk about this. This is not what I want to do. I've worked my whole life to become successful in business. And honestly, it's hard for me to enjoy it when I know that the world is falling down. And the reason that I talk about these things is for people like you, brother, who are trying to come out here in the world and do things and create things and build things. And I'm an entrepreneur and I recognize that in the current state of reality, it's going to be that much harder for an entrepreneur to build what I've been fortunate enough to build. This country has treated me very well and I want to protect that for guys like you, man. So I understand. Yeah, dude, some of it can get under your skin and some of it can be frustrating. But sticking our heads in the sand and saying, hey, this is too toxic to listen to. Yeah. I'm going to just go look over here. That's just going to ensure that we never get where we want to go. So I can understand that, bro, and I can relate to that because I got to come in here and talk about it. And there's a number of days that I come in here and talk about it, dude, and I leave here so angry that it really just ruins my day the rest of the day. So I feel that, man, no disrespect, but, you know, we also have a responsibility as citizens to know what's going on. And that's why I do this, man. So I, I feel what you're saying, but, you know, we do got to pay attention and we got to take action. Yeah, drink some Absolutely. coffee first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I, I do love our guys telling them. Have, have a first form uh, energy. <laughs> to get you going. <laughs> nah, man. That's not, you know, I, I get it. I get I'll, it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll wake up early in the morning. I need, I need this to get me through some of that cardio. So Bro, by the I time I wake, <laughs> by the time I wake up, dude, you've already shared the show. Right, right, right. <laughs> Every day, dude, I look at, Will is the first dude that shares the show. That's real shit. The first dude. And I, by the way, I fucking really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we got one more. Got to address some, some bullshit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this comment, uh, this comment comes from at Ryan underscore uh, Gawka. Uh, he says, let's get DJ some recognition for his jokes. He is low-key <laughs> hilarious. Ah, look at the now, comments. I want you to look at these fucking comments from these assholes. Uh, hashtag <laughs> definitely not DJ. Nice try, DJ. Yeah, DJ, we ain't falling for it. DJ getting creative with the name this time. True. Okay, Ryan Galka. <laughs> creative with the names, homie. Quote, I'm not DJ. He's just extremely funny and deserves a trophy and a huge bonus. <laughs> Laying it on there pretty thick there, DJ. Listen here, guys. <laughs> like, like when Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant had the slow That uh, is fucked account. up. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. <laughs> Look how long this shit is. Yeah, you, you need to hire Ryan Golka, a.k.a. yourself, to be, <laughs> to be your agent. <laughs> <laughs> DJ's going to come in and be like, I got an agent. Bro, that's fucked He's up. right here. Yeah, His name up. is Ryan. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's fucked up is what that is, man. 23 <laughs> 
the comments like that. Yeah. Bro. Get them. <laughs> Dude, I love our people, bro. bro like awesome. when people fucking smart off in the comments, they just bury them. Oh, I mm -hmm. love it. And I do love how they got a sense of humor about shit. I too. love it. I fucking love these guys, bro. Oh man, we appreciate all you guys yeah. for being real ass fans. Yeah. Uh, no thank trophy. you guys for <laughs> 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 uh, appreciate you guys, man. Keep liking, commenting, and make sure you hit that subscribe Dude, button. Well, you can see DJ at home. <laughs> that was hilarious. And he just, and he deserves a huge bonus. <laughs> I don't fucking care what you guys say. Five thousand likes, I get a trophy. <laughs> right. Oh, five thousand likes, I get a trophy. Run it, run it, run that shit up. All right, well, let's keep moving. We got headline number two. Headline number two reads: Megyn Kelly stunned by Katie Couric comments about oh. jealous Trump voters. Megyn Kelly is bad. Ass. I love Megyn. Yeah, Megyn's awesome. And uh, I did her show. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. it was cool. She needs to come on this one. Yeah, I'd love to have her on the we show. Get she, her on. Bro, she's badass. Oh, she, she tells people what the fuck is up. Takes no <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. Leave no prisoners. Bro. I went on that first time and I didn't know like I didn't know like what the limits were, right? Like I didn't know if I could like say that. like I had asked her in the show, I'm like, can I curse? Yeah. And then like cause I didn't like watch much of her clips or anything. Yeah. And then I go to her clips and I'm like, holy shit. Right, right. Bro, she probably thinks I'm a bitch. <laughs> cause I was so polite on the like, show. I thought you guys said he was real yeah, right? hey hey have me back on i'll give you the full the full cannons yeah i was i try to be respectful when i go on other people's show because i don't know but then i watch hers and i'm like damn all right yeah you left something on the table yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's funny. uh but yeah so let's dive into this a little bit so megan kelly was left virtually speechless by katie couric's recent comments describing supporters of former President Donald Trump as driven by, quote, anti-intellectualism. Mm. What's that mean? That means we're stupid. Yeah. And, oh, we, so like, like we, we hate smart people or intel intelligent people. Is that what that means? I, you know what? I'm too dumb to know. <laughs> I'm too, <I'm> too anti-intellectual <laughs> to get that one. Uh, Kelly played a clip of a recent interview that Couric gave to Bill Maher on his podcast in which she described political polarization in the country. Quote, talk about not getting it, Kelly said on Wednesday's editions of the Megyn Kelly show. Here is the clip she's referencing. Katie Couric, who sat down with Bill Maher and said the following. Take a listen to this. It's not 30. And I feel like, to your point, Bill, the socioeconomic disparities are a lot and class resentment is a lot what and anti-intellectualism and elitism is what is driving many of these these anti-establishment which are trump voters right. or anti-establishment voters so i think that is a huge problem that we have to address i mean globalization and you know the transition from an industrial to a technological so, society. I mean, I, I and I don't know if you've ever been jealous of some what someone else has or resentful. It is such a corroding and um, bitter, almost bile <laughs> feeling. Right. Yeah, that's not her first time. That's not her first. That's not Katie's Katie's first time. Uh, she once said that Trump supporters need to be deprogrammed. You guys remember that one? Um, the big tech uh, and media push to see conservative thought weeded out of all the spaces they control is marching forward one day before President-elect Joe Biden assumes office. So this was back in 2020 yeah. um, with a promise to heal and unite Americans. During an appearance on uh, Fridays on HBO's Real Time with, again, Bill Maher, uh, former CBS News anchor Katie Couric rebuked Republicans who failed to vote in favor of impeaching President Donald Trump and suggested that 74 million Americans who voted for the outgoing commander in chief need to be deprogrammed. Here's the clip. OK. And as much as I'm worried about these loons who break into government, I'm actually more worried about the loons who did get elected. Because, I, I mean, what do you do about these people? There's 147 Republicans in Congress who still don't concede that Trump lost the election. What do you do about people who are in the government who don't believe in our way of government? It is so shocking. Not only do, are they not conceding, Bill, but there's 
thoughts that there might have been some collusion among members of Congress. Some are refusing yeah. to go through magnom not magnometers or whatever you call yeah. them to, to check for weapons. They're not wearing masks during the siege. I mean, it's really bizarre <laughs> isn't it, when you think about how AWOL so many of these members of Congress have gotten. But I also think some of them are believing the garbage that they are being fed 24 7 on the internet by their constituents and yeah. they bought into this big lie and the question is how are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of trump yeah that's wild yeah so who's she talking about <laughs> who are the who, who who's she talking about well she's talking about everybody that isn't in their little echo chamber class don't have purple hair <clears throat> no it's not even that they don't care about those purple hair people. No. They only care about themselves. They use those people to get an outcome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's interesting, though, when you listen to her talk because she's so dumb, she doesn't understand how dumb she is. You know, she's sitting here talking about the resentment of class and the jealousy of class, and those people created that intentionally. They're the ones that created class warfare. It is a fundamental element of marxism and communism and they're the ones when she mentions you know oh the involvement into globalization that is communism which is why they fucking hate you and we do hate you by the way yeah. Yeah. and the reason that we do hate you <laughs> is because you're a liar you're a gaslighter and she literally is sitting there on bill maher admitting that she is elite class and that everybody else is below her and what do you think somebody who's been on TV her whole life who probably thinks she's the biggest celebrity in the fucking world, you know, how else does she see the world? Yeah. You know, she sees regular people as people who clean her fucking toilets. Yeah. She doesn't see it. Like, when was the last time she pumped her own gas or went out in reality? When was the last time she walked the streets of middle America or one of these cities that is crumbling because of the policies that these people have put in place. And the narrative she fucking perpetuated. And not only that, bro, the money that these people are making off of that plight. So it's interesting to me for her to sit there and think that she's so intellectual in reality, she's just telling on herself. Yeah. What do you think, brother? I think they're, they're projecting. They're projecting yeah. what they're doing yeah. to Trump and what they call the MAGA Republicans. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. And then I, when she was talking about the feeling of being jealous and all that, she knows it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she, cause she, she knows. It, she feels that every day. But yeah, I, I just feel like it's uh, blaming the other side for what they're actually doing. Yeah, I know you are, but what am I? Yeah, yeah but yeah. dude, the thing is, is that what they're trying to create, the division that they propagate, and the dr division that they're trying to uh, create has now turned their focus onto these people. And what we've seen over the last two years at least is that this, this progressive movement, this leftist movement, which is different than a Democrat movement, okay? This is leftist progressiveness is borderline Marxist slash communist. It's the crazy shit, okay? We're not talking about reasonable Democrats from 20 years ago. Um, the Overton window has shifted so far left that when we say left, it actually means people that are off the spectrum of true uh, democracy, you know, or a republic. Um, so when we, you know, when we look at these people and what they've done and what they propagate in, in terms of identity and class warfare and division, all that's happening is is that it's starting to turn on themselves, which is which is what we've seen over the last few years, right? We've seen their narratives crumble time after time after time. The stories crumble time after time after time. The people who they've been using, who they used in 19, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 to do all of this stuff, you know, uh, make life super divisive over Trump. You know, the racial division, the division amongst uh, gay and straight people, the division amongst you know, wealthy people and, and, and middle class people. They've done all this intentionally. And now those people who have been continually told all of these things are turning their focus on the people who have actually done it. Yeah. So that's, that's really what it is, dude. Yeah. That's how I see it. You know, when she talks about <clears throat> these these people who are anti into elections, they're anti No, we're just sick of your shit. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. sick of your shit. And it's not like there's you can't just like look out into the crowd and be like, oh that that person's a, you know, because they like Trump, they're that's not they're what it stupid. Is. 
we're, we're, we're yeah. sick of your shit, right? Yeah, and we cool. all look different, bro. Like we don't we don't look the same. Here, here's here's an example of somebody that's sick of the shit. Yeah, mm. this is a black woman in fucking Chicago. Yeah, the bluest of blue you could possibly get, and they're yeah. having a mat. Look at her T-shirt. What does it say? Chicago red. Look at her fucking hat. Right. Mm. She didn't vote Republican before this this year. I guarantee it. Right, but let's mm. let, let's it's possible, but probably not. I no, no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. I'll show you. She didn't. Okay, you know, and so like that's the thing. And so like we're we're sick of the shit. We're sick of America. The American people are sick of being treated as third class citizens with the policies they put in, uh, what they choose, what our government chooses to focus on and raise up. We're sick of it. We're fucking sick of it. Um, and it's happening all over the country, and I love to bring awareness to it when it does. Uh, this headline reads, Black Chicago voters rip mayor on extra $70 million for migrants as recall petition gathers steam. Uh, infuriated black Chicagoans showed up in force at a city council meeting on Wednesday to protest Mayor Brandon Johnson's request for an additional $70 million in taxpayer funds to be spent on tackling the city's migrant crisis, while a petition that would give residents the right to recall the mayor is gathering serious traction. The progressive mayor, who has vigorously defended the city's sanctuary policies in the past, wants aldermen to greenlight the extra cash in a vote on Friday, despite the Windy City having already poured $300 million into housing, food, and health care for the recently arrived illegals, according to the city's latest numbers. Here is the clip uh, that Fox News covers. Now, to align yourself with somebody who's obviously a one-term mayor, if he even makes it that far, you better be worrying about your job. Oh. You better be worrying about your longevity because we're going to vote and we're going to get you out because you ain't doing right by us. That's what time it is. Mayor <laughs> Johnson's plan to tack on another $70 million to migrant funding. Frustration building to the point that some voters are now working to get him out of office, as you heard that constituent there saying. Garrett Tenney live in Chicago with the story. Hi, Garrett. Yeah, Dana, good morning to you. This migrant issue has become an Achilles heel for Mayor Brandon Johnson, so much so that there are now multiple efforts underway to vote out Democrats and the mayor. We saw that yesterday at the city council meeting where several groups of black voters showed up wearing red shirts with the words, no more blue, go red, and turn Chicago red. Many of these folks are lifelong Democrats who are now actively working to shake up deep blue Chicago specifically because of how the mayor and the governor have handled the migrant crisis, doling out more than a billion dollars so far for that. And here they are warning the mayor and city council about transferring another $70 million from the city's rainy day fund to take care of the migrants. We need that money in my neighborhood. We need that on my block. So I'm asking y'all to use our tax money for our people. We need it. You vote for the money for these immigrants today and we coming for them seats. Yeah. <laughs> you can believe that. The police are fighting with them in the, in the shelters that you guys are funding. You guys think it's a great idea, but yet your police skin. officers are getting attacked. <laughs> your public's getting attacked. Currently, state law does not allow voters to recall Chicago's mayor, but after seeing how Mayor Johnson's first year has gone with the migrants and crime, a new group wants to change that by getting a referendum on the ballot this November that would pave the way to voting Johnson out. Yeah. You know, and the, and the crazy thing is, too, is like, you know, speaking about these, these illegals, they're asking for more. Bro. Like I said, with all the sanctuary cities, there's been over a billion dollars right now that has went into all these things. And that's not enough. They're not asking. They're demanding. They're demanding. <laughs> they're demanding. That's right. I saw this yesterday, what you're about to talk about. Demand you no, know, let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah, they're demanding it. <clears throat> what do we got on this, guys? Well, did you see the rally yesterday? The pro the protest? There was a thousand migrants there. And it was it was very, very, very similar. To the Soros organized BLM riots, they had uh, a migrant up there with a megaphone. They were doing chants, all the shirts, the signs. Yeah, yeah. dude, they had, uh, it, and they were, they were all the same signs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still believe that what we're, what we're going to have this summer is is a conflict of migrants, um, similar to what we had with 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 the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, only this time, it's going to be migrants.
Like it's, it's definitely ramping up. You see yeah, it all across. we see it more and yeah. more, man. Like these yeah. cases of these these illegals that are, you know, killing American citizens and getting off or walking scot free or getting like, it's increasing for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, that's saying it nicely. Well, yeah, I think and I think they're doing that to to raise uh, <clears throat> the level of animosity between the two, which I don't know that you could really raise it anymore because people are sick of it. You know, and like that lady said, and she's very, very, very true or very accurate, you know, our money should go to our neighborhoods. And and I, you know, I obviously can't speak for the black communities anywhere, uh, but if if I were a black person in a black community, I would be more pissed than anybody else because they come in every fucking four years and they talk about how they're going to build schools and build infrastructure and fund things and do all these things. And they never do any of it. They just take the money. And um, I would say my my only thing to this is, you know, anybody who's switching their perspective on who they're going to vote for, you have to be careful and and don't be one of these people that just votes red. Right. Make sure don't do you're, what you just right. did. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I understand the saying, but there are people who who are Republicans also who are cut from the same cloth of the, as these people that are Democrats. Mm-hmm. And so we have to be careful to make sure that we do our research, see who the real patriots are, see who the real Americans are, see who the people are that actually care about us and our neighborhoods and our people and uh, American citizens. And, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, this is definitely nice to see, but, you know, <clears throat> we got to be careful not to just blindly vote for people either. Yeah. yeah, and I I haven't seen those two before, but there's there's been uh, different clips with uh, one lady in particular who's um, spoke out of these town hall meetings saying, "Hey, crime's already high. You know, we need this money here in our communities, and you giving it to the migrants, you putting them up in places mm-hmm. to stay, and everything like that. Hey, tell Donald Donald Trump to come holler at us." Yeah, I see <laughs> like, that. Yeah, 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 I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people are getting sick and tired of it. Um, <laughs> just unfortunate, seventy million. Like what? <laughs> I think it's and way just, more than that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's three three hundred has already in, just in Chicago alone. There are three hundred million, and it's an additional right. seventy. And this is an additional seventy that's actually that, that's supposed to be kept for emergency situations. Yeah. for Chicagoans. And he he ain't even been there that long. No, he he hasn't even been in a full year. I don't. Right, think. right, right. Yeah, he already. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think <clears throat> the change has been for the black communities? Because it's definitely there is definitely momentum change happening. Yeah, you know when we when we looked at twenty twenty, I think it was only like six to nine percent of the black community voted for Trump, mm-hmm. and now they're talking like forty fifty percent. Right. So what it, what do you think that is, or what's spurring that? I know I know you guys could probably speak for everybody. Yeah, black, I mean as right? the chairman, yeah. of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the but, black delegation. Yeah, that's right. right, right, right. <laughs> I'll well, be oh. sure Will, Will's getting it more than me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They about to come after me in the comments. But, um, no, they're getting hit in the pocketbooks. Yeah, like yeah. Um, like everybody else. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, can't can't afford this, can't afford that, and then you know, inflation, and everything else like that. It's like, damn, I was already struggling. Now I'm about to struggle even more. But now y'all putting these people up, y'all, you know, helping yeah. everybody else out except the American people, like. It's like enough's enough. Yeah, I think I think that was a big deal. It was like because like you you saw this like string of of the narrative switching for like reparations. That was a big 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 yeah. talk for a minute, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then immediately following that, this illegal immigration situation yep. comes in, and they right? see all this money going and in, all of yeah. this money that you know black the black community has been crying for reparations for years. And listen, I'm I don't think we need it. Right. However, if we were going to do it, you know, what I'm saying like if that was going to be an actual conversation that we laid out, it's like those conversations have not happened in decades. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, we can get these illegal immigrants to come in and, and they get all of it. Yeah. Oh, A yeah. billion dollars has already went to 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 to, to aiding these causes. Right. Yeah. And so it's like I think that was a major wake up for a lot of people like, mm-hmm. well, holy shit, like we've been crying. And then the same people that, you know, are telling us and promising us all of this hope and change. Yep. You know, these new people come in and you immediately take to them and, and you're giving them thousands of dollars a month free. For, like, Absolutely. Credit cards. It, they, 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 I think yeah. they, a lot of black people just felt fucking abandoned. And I think that's what 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 sparked a lot of that change, man. Yeah. Well, you showing them you got the money. It's just like, <laughs> it's right. like flesh. Like, hey, you have the money right here or whatever, but it ain't coming to you like we promised. Mm-hmm. It's going, it's and going they're doing here, it right in their here. face. Right, right in Absolutely. their face. Absolutely. It's interesting to me because, you know, that when they, when they, 
they may, you know, if you think back to when Trump was in office and he wanted to build that wall, right? Yep. The, $5 billion. Yeah, for $5 billion, right? <laughs> That's it. And <clears throat> they made the migrant issue a racism issue. Right. Right? And, and it was, they- It was a Hispanic issue, Mexico, yeah, right? Well, they made it a race, a race issue. And it's interesting because like when they made it, it's almost like if you look back, it's like they made this a race issue so that the, the black community would, would not really- tie the two together because when they hear racism, it's just racism, right? right? And and it wasn't until these people showed up in their fucking neighborhood and they're like, wait a minute. Yeah. They're even fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now all of a sudden they racist. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, dude, you know, like this is this is you know, for for two years, DJ and I got called all kinds of names because we were talking about this. And guys, this is what we were talking about. You know what I mean? And it's just, I we just got to get back to understanding that uh, America is for everybody, bro. And it's not for these people who come here illegally. It's not for the criminals of the other countries of the world. It's not for 10 million military age males that are going to come harass our women and fuck with our communities. Those people got to go. But for us who have been born here, black, white, Asian, Latino, we're all the same, bro. We all bleed red. And we need to be working together in a unified fashion to keep our country safe. And that's, it's starting to happen. But, but dude, like, you know, if these people go to get deported, I don't think un- people understand like what that's going to look like. Yeah. You know, that's going to not be a, it is not going it's not going to be, be a fun thing to look at. Oh, and they're going to turn this into another big race issue because oh, of that. Yeah. Because like, bro, they're gonna they're gonna have to put checkpoints and like check papers. Yeah, and, dude, and they're gonna tie it in. They're check gonna those IDs. That right. When Trump that. starts doing that, they're gonna be like, oh look, he's Hitler. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And well, you know that's what they call him in the White House. Did you see that come out? What Trump's nickname in the White House is Hitler Pig. I mean, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that could have came up with like something a little bit more zingier. Yeah, that's yeah. not. Well, dude, you know, and then they're talking about him banning books, and bur- like in Florida, they're they're banning books. Yeah, dude, but they the never gay they ones. Yeah, <laughs> right. they they right. never yeah. they never say yeah. they never say what the books are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they try to they try to say, oh well, the the books are like the life of Jody. Catch okay, her well, in Jody's the eye. Sucking dick in that book. Right. Like yeah. we can't have it, not, dude. Not how to change your gender without your parents' permission. Yeah. Right, yeah. D- dude. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, if you go back to the book burning that happened in the 30s, and like the people get mad when you say this. Same type of books. Same books that got yeah. burned in the 30s. Same yeah. type of books. Yeah. I'll do a little. That's why they call him Hitler, bro. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of parallels there. There's also a lot of complete polar opposite viewpoints. But just because we want to remove information that isn't appropriate for our kids, we don't let our kids get fucking tattoos when they're three. Mm-hmm. We don't let kids watch porn when they're three right. we don't let kids drink alcohol when they're three so why are we letting grown men go in there and shake their dicks right. why are we letting these people read kids books that have blowjobs and fucking and then they say well they got to learn about it sometime Shoot. bro yeah. you <laughs> learn about it when you learn about it when you start going through puberty right you right. F- assholes are stealing these kids childhoods man right. when i was a kid bro i was out playing in the dirt man mm. i was like digging holes and fucking you know being a kid yeah you know, and they didn't, I don't know what you guys did, but that's what we did. We dug holes <laughs> <Yeah>. and shit. <laughs> yeah, they playing outside. I, I, yeah. I, I threw mud well. pies at crack. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, we, we played. That's real shit. Yeah, we played like, we played baseball in the yard. Yeah. We played, you know, dude, we weren't thinking about like any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know, you know, like, I didn't even know like anything until I was like, I started hitting puberty and right. shit, you know? Right. Yeah. And... <clears throat> And even then, bro, it still has to be done in a very responsible manner. Yeah, yep. but That's dude, part of like they these people's argument is, well, they got to learn about it because that because if they don't, uh, they won't know what this is. Well, no shit, because it's not natural, yeah. right? You're not allowing them to go out and like experience their first kiss mm-hmm. or you know learn about what they are into or what they're not into or like what they like. Like, yeah, dude, okay, someone turns 13, 14 years old and, you know, maybe they are gay. 
Okay, but they discover that. They're not fucking told that from the time right. they're three. Right. Or with some of these crazy abusive parents who hold up their infant and they're like, our infant is trans. What the what? F- I knew it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just posted a video the other day of a little girl who was eight and um, she didn't want to go through female puberty and stuff like that. So her parents like, okay, well, you know, you can go on the hormone blockers and shit like that or whatever. And she's eight. And it's like. That's do, insane. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's insane. It's wild. And to go back to the, the migrant thing, not only, you know, is some of the stuff they're doing a slap in the face to black people, but also the uh, immigrants that came over legally, you know, did yeah, things yeah. the right way. That's, that's a lot of stuff I get in my comments when I start talking about this stuff. People be like, nah, we came over here the right way, did this, 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 and that. Uh, fuck all the legal shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> they need no. to come through like we had to. No, because a through. lot of those people, really take, that shit takes years. Yeah, and money. And they're they're paying, uh, you know, paying yeah. for certain things or whatever, kind of get through and everything. And people coming over just to get a, and getting a check, getting a place to stay and all that yeah. when... I was like, I should have waited five years. Uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What do yeah. you think, dude? What do you think about that, having to go through that whole process and then seeing all these people come over? Yeah, I think it's a little bit unfair. I mean, even, like, I, I pride myself in being a hardworking person and just seeing someone. I know the process it takes to get get the citizenship, and, you know, it's a long process. There's a lot of bullshit kind of that goes throughout the way, and just seeing people come here and not only come here but also disrespect the land, it's, it's very disheartening. Yeah, I mean, it's. I I mean, I I'm with you. I think it should be harsh. I think we should just round them up and send them back to. Fuck yeah, people. no, let's do it. That's coming from our our immigrant. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean our, our, our legal legal immigrant. Yeah, damn. Thank you for that. No, I, but listen, real shit though. I, I'm gonna foreshadow some shit on this this Chicago stuff, right? Because they're trying to do this recall that they're putting in, right? Here's the thing. There's already been precedent set for this. New York City has already, uh, I believe, put the bill in to to get this done. They're going to give those migrants the right to vote in Chicago in their local elections in hopes that they'll overwhelm whatever recall that, you know, the actual Chicago and American people are tired of. They're going to give those migrants the right to vote in Chicago. Mark my words. Oh, I think they're going to try to give them the the right to vote nationally. Yeah, yeah, see, like, nationally, I'm not... I feel like the Supreme Court will have jurisdiction over that, but they don't have jurisdiction over local local level elections. So they're going to start there for sure. And then once they build up enough precedents. Well, like, don't you think they're going to try to get these people amnesty and, and citizenship before November? Yeah. 100%. 100%. There's going to be a mass move, fucking yeah, 100%. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. Yep. They're handing these people flyers along the way through Mexico if, reminding them to vote for Biden. Mm-hmm. Listen, dude. Hillary, da- Hillary Clinton's daughter runs one of the NGOs that is doing that shit and uh, passing those flyers out. Yeah, and think think about this from a fundamental like reality perspective. They ruin the lives of so many American citizens that, they, that the American citizens say, hey, we're not voting for you anymore. Mm-hmm. We're not with it anymore. Just like those women said on, on TV there. Yeah. And then <clears throat> these people are such pieces of shit that they say, well, you know what? We don't need those people. We'll just import more people and we'll give them the right to vote and we'll stay in power and we'll be able to continue to do these things. Like this is the level of arrogance and elitism that we're dealing with. These people think they are the rulers of us. And until people come together and unify and understand what we are up against. This is not left right that we are up against. This is an establishment of elitism and people who believe that they are better than us, who are imposing their will, whether we like it or not. They are creating a scenario where our vote does not matter so that they can continue to profit and they can continue to stay in power. That's what's happening, dude. So like, doesn't matter where you come from, or what party you voted for, or who who you identify with politically, your vote's going to be irrelevant because of what these people are doing. And that that's, dude, that's, to me, that's treason. Yeah. Like, you're ignoring the will of the people and intentionally making a situation where we don't have control over our own country anymore. Mm-hmm. These people are not Americans. These are people... Do seven out of ten of these people are military age males? Yep. Okay, and we have these scenarios of women all over, and, and it's it's this is another interesting sort of like how they used racism to let these people to create the social acceptance for these people to come here. <laughs> 
a lot of these upper uh, middle class white women who vote for all this progressive shit but live in their little McMansion out in the fucking, you know, and, and, the burbs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they don't ever touch reality. Right. And they think they're being noble and they think they're being kind and they think they're being big hearted. Those are the people that are getting attacked by the migrants. And now they're like, well, where are the men? Well, remember what you did for the last 10 years where you ran around and said you don't need any men and that men are toxic and toxic masculinity and me too and all this shit to suppress men's opinions and their presence in general. Like, do you remember that? You know, we see these these dudes, you know, swimming in pools with girls and winning championships and, you know, beating girls up in sports. And we got these suburbanite moms saying, where are the men? Well, you fucking silenced the men for 10 years. Now you want him back? Like, dude, let us do what the fuck we're supposed to do and stop thinking that you're overly virtuous by voting for things that you have no reality or no concept of what's actually going on. You know, like, if you don't actually know what's going on, then just don't fucking vote. You know what I'm saying? Like, just choose not to vote. You don't know. Because your vote... And you guys that go to brunch and stick your fucking pinkies up and and brag to your friends about, you know, how virtuous you are. You're fucking creating these scenarios that you're complaining about and you don't even realize it. Yeah, it's real shit, man. It's real shit. Guys, let's keep the show moving. We got headline number three. Uh, this is a this is a good one to see. Uh, this is a good one to see. We talked a little bit about, you know, our our, our young generation of kids that are um, obviously being targeted. Um, you know, and, and being having these narratives and ideologies pushed down their throats, um, there's a there's a pushback from those kids. Nice. So this is good to see. This, <laughs> um, this headline reads, uh, furry infestation. Middle school students walk out in protest after school leaders allow furries to terrorize them. They bite, scratch, bark, chew on sticks, have a kitty litter box and bathroom. And you got middle school students that are protesting this, and they walked out of the school. This is this is awesome. Let's dive into this. So, middle school students at Mount Nebo School in Payson, Utah, held a walkout protest today against unhinged school officials that allow furries to terrorize them at school. Students report in the video below that the furries bite, scratch, and bark at them. The furries also chew on sticks in class and have a kitty litter box uh, was set up in the girls' restroom. For them to use. Um, so for those of you guys that don't know what a furry is, these are furries. Okay, these are people who dress up as uh, dogs and cats with tails, some not as creative as these costumes. Um, and they believe they are these animals. But these are grown people, right? These are adults. And yeah, there's yeah. kids grown, that do this as well. Yeah. Um, and so they're they're over it. Um, they're, they're completely over it. So in the, uh, there's a video, this guy, uh, uh, his Twitter handle is life is driving. Um, he did this whole expose on the story. Um, uh, but he also noted that they are required to keep distance from furries. Um, whereas the same rules do not apply for the furries. So the school is telling these kids that, Hey, if you don't like it, just keep distance from them. Right. But they're not telling the furries to stop with the kids. Right. Um, the protesting youth believe that the school's tolerance stems from the principal whose child happens to be a furry. This is insane. The children are the adults here. Um, here's the clip uh, from uh, some of those protests that uh, where, where the students are calling this stuff out. So are they wearing a mask every day? Yes. 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 But every time they go, they're always just wearing a mask. But the principal finally stood up and banned those stuff. But they, ha- but they still wear them every day, yeah, they don't and they don't get in trouble. They the principal us. doesn't get to make them get in trouble. Yeah. All, all the principal says is just be kind, be nice, be nice. And then... What's the point of dressing up like a furry? Just I don't know. They think they're so cool that they want to do that. Holy shit. They want so, so people can come at them and just look at them and think that they're so cool. Okay. Uh, also, Are you guys uh, going to be in trouble for walking out of school today? No, no. no maybe. We might if we, if we, if we look back on school if we grounds, back, we will get in trouble. Hopefully not. We're standing for the furries. We're standing for what the furries are are wrong. This is wrong. We should, they should not be doing Do your parents know you guys are out here? Yes! yes. Oh. They attack us. If they bite us and we just kick them, we get in trouble. They attack us. They attack us and we get in trouble. We get 
Yeah. Yeah. How else do they attack you guys? They either bite us, they scratch us, they bark at us. They bite us, they us, and then they spray us with perfume. They run on all fours and pounce on people. Why are they spraying you with Febreze? Just because they don't. Because we apparently have rabies. And there's a rumor that they've been putting litter boxes in the girls' bathroom. I heard that it was just a rumor. No, it's, no, 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 it's, no, it's not. true. Hey, yeah, it's true. Is it something you've seen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So we can't talk or say anything to the furries or even look at them, but they can come look at us and they can say stuff to us and touch us. And we can they don't get in trouble, but we, we get in trouble. Interesting. That sounds like a double standard to me. Yes. And wait, okay, you guys stay on the sidewalk, trouble. okay? Yeah. Now, uh, KTVX. Well, can uh, I say something? Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple things to say. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, now I know why I don't have fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. How do you people with kids do that that's shit? How, that is how it is. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that is how it is. Bro, I got to go. I got to go do a cold plunge or something, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Is that giving you anxiety, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Second of all, if I was fucking furries, I'd stay 100 miles away from them kids. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe bite them. <laughs> maybe that's why they're biting them. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Holy cow, man. <laughs> Some people just built for it, and I ain't one of them. Yeah, hey, <laughs> listen, it is, it is tough. It is tough. Um, but yeah, so so KTVX they uh, they did an article on this. They posted it to to Fox, uh, I'm sorry to Yahoo. Um, this was their title: Students of uh, Walk Out of Utah Middle School to Protest Furries. Now let's see what the school officials are saying because they did respond um, uh, and made made a couple of statements. So uh, let's dive into this. So uh, quote. A lot of the information that's been put out there is completely incorrect and inaccurate. Nebo School District Public Information Officer Seth Sorensen told ABC4.com. While Sorensen said uh, there have been issues with harassment or students making others feel uncomfortable or unsafe, he said most of the claims online are false. Uh, Quote, the administration at the school addressed that with the entire student body, and they cut out a couple of emails, Sorensen said. Some of those emails were misinterpreted, and parents took to online formats to voice some of their concerns and questions. Uh, Sorensen said students are not dressing up as cats and dogs, um, and because there is a dress code in place, he doesn't think videos that have been shared online from Nebo schools. Uh, Sorensen emphasized that the main goals of the district are open communication and student safety. Um, he continues saying, quote, today we had some students and parents choose to exercise their right to assemble and do a little protest for what they perceived was something that was happening in the school, Sorensen said. Quote, it's actually, uh, it actually is not something that's been occurring. So the reports of students dressing as animals are, quote, a little bit inaccurate, uh, saying students wearing headbands with ears are similar to students wearing bow, uh, bow, bow, bows and sports jersey. Uh, Sorensen said dressing up is, quote, just what students of this age do. Uh, quote, interestingly enough, they really didn't address us with anything they wanted changed, Sorensen said of the protesters. Um, no, I think they were very clear on what they wanted changed. I think they're very, very clear. <laughs> Even their, 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 their signs. Yeah the, the like, ki- yeah, the kids weren't complaining about them dressing up. They were tired of getting bit and shit. Yeah, very, very <laughs> simple. It's very, very simple. Like this one sign, the, the, the green one there says, we just want to learn. Yeah. And even if it's a few, that's a few too many. Like, how many times, you know. One is too many. Yeah, if my kids are getting bit at school, it's, it's a problem. Yeah. Not <laughs> it, only that, dude. Yeah. I mean, like, where where are we, what are we trying to accomplish with allowing this? Exactly. Yeah. You know, part of going to school is learning how to function in real society. I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. If one of these motherfuckers here showed up dressed like a fucking furry, they wouldn't have a fucking job tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's it. That's yeah. real shit, man. Yeah. Like, you know, I'd that's, say, hey, what the f- well, here, here in rea- reality, Figured we out probably laugh our asses off for a day. <laughs> yeah, but like if you show once up, once you to- realize they were serious, yeah, it'd be over, dude. Yeah, you're going home. Yeah, yeah. you ain't coming back, and you could sue me or whatever the fuck you want. Right, and I don't care. You know, I think that's a lot of what drives this. I think people yeah. are scared. <clears throat> you know, for the last number of years, and I would say the last decade, the outrage, the selective outrage, and the canceling. And the social pressure has come from the far left group of people, right? Mm -hmm. Who include these mentally ill people that do this kind of stuff. Mm 
And, you know, it includes all these people that are Zzer, Zooms, yeah. you know. Zuzus and Wham Whams. Boob- yeah. <laughs> boozies and Koozies. <laughs> you know, like, what am I? I'm, I'm a, I'm a. Little Debbie's. Yeah. yeah. A little Debbie slash hostess. Big no, Debra. Man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, bro, y'all are y'all menta- weird, man. Y'all mentally ill, for real. All of you. Okay. Like, you're not in reality. And we don't have to play with you. We don't have to. You. You are a fucking weirdo, okay? And we are not weirdos. Like, real talk. Like, there are men and there are women, and just because I don't want to play pretend with you does not make me a bigot. It makes me an understanding uh, understanding of reality. Yeah, an yeah, adult. Yeah. I just and, saw some shit today where people were talking about their genders change with the seasons. Dude, I saw, <laughs> was that you that posted yeah, that? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Seasonal gender, yeah. uh, what, what was it called? It was a... Uh, uh, seasonal genderism, or something. So like, I'm like gay that. in the summer, yeah, but so straight in the, in the winter. winter yeah. it's, it's kind of like it's all di- different. And the girl like, explaining it, she was like, "Oh, this is new to me." So it was fucked up for her too. So she was, what? <laughs> yeah, and she, it was. It was you should, wow. What do you think she looked like? <laughs> oh, yeah. you already know. What do you think she looked like, DJ? <laughs> Describe her. <laughs> Who are the person under that? No, 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 no. I'm being honest. Like, give me, give me your best shot. Okay, all right. What she look like? We're gonna go. She's she was probably about five foot four. We right. couldn't tell because yeah. it was just her face. Well, that confirms it. That also means she's probably about five hundred pounds. <laughs> she looked yeah. a little chubby. Did she have purple hair? Was it blue or something? It was close to purple. Pink. Close to purple. Yeah, hair. It was pink. Yeah. She had a uh, really really bad grease face acne. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right so far? I mean, it's pretty yeah, close. Pretty spot on. White. Yeah. Yeah, she was white. A few, a few piercings. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, she had a piercings. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's pretty good, bro. This is right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what I win. Yeah. Come on down. That was right, pretty right. fucking spot on. <laughs> you, you win common sense, <laughs> yeah. dude. But like, we don't yeah. have to. We don't have to. Like, here's what people don't understand, right? They say, they say to us. You're a bigot. You're against these people. Yeah. Yes, I am. And you're fucking weird. No, <laughs> here's why, though. If you want to be you and dis- and and be yourself, and that's how you want to be, cool. But realize that people are going to look at you like you're a weirdo. Right. And here's why. Because you are enforcing your preferences on every other person around you. And people don't like that. Yeah. Nobody likes being told to pretend. And there is a there is damage that's done to the person that pretends and people don't talk about that. Like when you lie to yourself or you pretend something is true that isn't true, you are violating your own integrity. You are violating what you know to be true to appease someone else, which lowers your self-worth and your belief in yourself and your trust in yourself. So I'm not going to play your game because I want to feel good that I have my integrity in check and that I am going to tell the truth about what I know to be true. And, and nobody talks about that aspect of it. It's not harmless. And on top of it, this is designed to remove all sense of identity in any situation, which is the beginning of removing reality in all, in, in all cases. If a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man, then what else, yep. what else is on the table for discussion? Yeah. Everything else. Up is down. Right, exactly. So, you know, bro, these people... This shouldn't be allowed at all. School should be a place like there should be a dress code. You know, when I went to school, bro, you had to wear a certain kind of pants and a certain kind of shirt. And if you didn't, bro, you they sent you home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like there was this kind of shit wasn't allowed. We weren't allowed to like we were there to learn. We were there to learn about life and learn how to execute. And dude, these these people are being intentionally handicapped so that they're non-functional in the real world when they become of age. So that they are one of these people that becomes dependent on a universal basic income in the government, which means they have to vote for the communist Marxist progressive side to to survive. So they're they're manufacturing voters through creating people who are are not able to function in society. Mm -hmm. And it starts with, you know, seemingly harmless shit like this that people can't. 
they can't connect three or four dots ahead. They just yeah. say, oh, what, what difference does it make? They're not hurting anybody. Yeah. Well, actually, it makes a pretty big difference. Yeah, well, they're starting them early. They said the principal telling them, oh, just be nice to them, just be nice, or whatever, and grooming them for later on in life. Like, oh, well, you know, I'm just be nice and just allow this person just walk all over me mm-hmm. with their beliefs. And oh, I remember this when I was in middle oh, yeah, school. Exactly, not a big exactly. deal. The thing that kills me with a lot of these people is – uh. You know, they'll be like, oh, they, they just don't like me like this, or they'll equate it to being like black. Like, they don't like us like black people. <laughs> I'm like, well, how, how do we get along yeah, right. with this? <laughs> <laughs> I am basically wait, wait in minute. slavery <laughs> right now. <laughs> right it is interesting got, how that- got nothing to do with this. <laughs> bro, it, it is interesting how that uh, that LGBTQIA, yeah. 7 z z z z right. movement, Mm-hmm. Like tries to include black people. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got right. our own stripe on that flag. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, 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 put that shit there. Yeah, where, where we come from? Who is gay? <laughs> right. Right. Why, why are you gay? Right. Yeah. I'm not gay. Yeah, no. It's you are gay. You, you are gay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I, I, like I said, I think it's just cool to see the young generation. Like, I, I think this is fucking cool from these kids. Yeah. As, uh, as, as hard as that was to listen to. Um, I think it's awesome that they're doing I think it. every kid in America should go home and not go back to school at all. Every single one until this shit is out of their schools. Yep. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Yep. The, sc- the schools will fucking, they, they will, they will fail. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? They'll so, get, because f- tax dollars going to that school is just a small percentage. It's not like the parents they are on need, board. Yeah. Like, 100%. Your, your, parents know, your parents know you're out here? Yeah. Uh, here, yeah. so. A few of the parents were out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, so it, it's good. But like that, yeah, one hundred percent because bro, the schools they get money off of those kids actually being in the seats. Well, you know. The tail is wagging the dog. These people are not the majority. Right. They're a small fraction of the minority. Mm-hmm. And once the dog figures out that the tail is wagging the dog, this will end. And that's what's happening. People are figuring it out. They're like, you know what? I don't see any of this shit in the real world. Right. And then when they do see it, it's one fucking weirdo out of every 10,000 people they see. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? We don't have to listen to those people. We don't have to abide by their rules. Their bullying doesn't work online anymore. No one cares. Nope. Like, dude, we get called every name in the book, and it's funny. Jeez. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Bro. yeah. Well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, I saw this comment on, uh, on, on one of our local newspapers pages, uh, Dylan Mulvaney speaking at... Slew, did mm-hmm. you see that? Mm-hmm. And somebody, uh, you want to go? No, they, <laughs> they, they posted she is speaking at, and someone posted he mm-hmm. with an asterisk, and the, then the comment was, "So you're a transphobe," and the comment back was, "Whatever the fuck you want to call me, I don't give a shit." Right. And that comment got like seven hundred <laughs> likes. Oh, that's great. Like that's no one great. cares. That's great. Like bro, y'all bullying everybody it ain't working anymore. Mm-hmm. You you need to shut the fuck up because the more you bully us, the more aggressive the backlash is going to be. Yep. Just leave us alone, and we'll leave you alone. Yep. Stay out of our fucking schools. Stay out of jamming this shit down our throat. You know, like all the gay people that aren't with this shit, you need to be extra vocal so you don't get tied into it. You know what I mean? Yep. This isn't. This is bullshit. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. I always think it's funny. I'll, I'll make a video on race or me saying oh, I didn't think that was racist, and uh, it never fails. You have your white guy or white lady. You're like you, Uncle Tom. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. That's not racist. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, damn. <laughs> And people normally go after them and shit. They should. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah those people. Yeah. Those people should be called yeah. out and abused oh, yeah. and made fun of. Absolutely. Like, bro, these people at this point in time, like, and look, dude, I am against this fundamentally, but for a short period of time, these people need to be bullied back. Yeah. They need to be bullied into fucking submission, and they need to be made fun of, and they need to be told shut the fuck up. And until we do that on mass scale, th- this will not go away. Yeah. Keep, it's keep it's going on. Look, dude. You know, people like to, like we talked about with when Chandler was on, you know, people like to turn the other cheek because they have tolerance, right? They think that, to- and this is why they have pressed the idea of tolerance on a society for the last 15 years so hard, yeah. right? And now all of us people who know what the truth is, we have, we have been tolerant, right? We've been very tolerant. We knew this shit was crazy when we first saw it. Absolutely. Like 10 years ago, we we're like, oh, This is fucking weird, you know, and we didn't say anything because we're trying to be tolerant. And now look where we are with it. Now we're the bigots. Now we're the bad people because we've tolerated them to have enough social traction and enough power to start to suppress our voices and not care what we want. 
And the reality is, is you guys are the minority. We're the majority. We're tired of being bullied. And and if and for people to stop it for good, it's time to start destroying these people on the internet. That's the truth. Yep. Mm-hmm. And in, and I'm not saying go to their house. I'm not saying dox them. I'm not saying yeah. beat them up. But I am saying that when they come online with their dumb shit, they need to not come online again with their dumb shit. Yep. You guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. That being said, let's get to our final segment of the show. As always, we have thumbs up. We're dumb as fuck. This is where we bring a. Uh, bring something up, we talk about it, to get one of those two options. And so with that being said, our thumbs up or dumb as fuck headline is uh, just a tweet. And we got a clip. Uh, tweet reads, a Philly man arrested by twin brother. Hmm. Got the video. All right. Here's a clip. It's a free dude, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing. Only in Philadelphia. Look at them both laughing. (laughs) (laughs) What we got on that, guys? I mean, he just just probably just showed up with some other officer. He's like, hey, you. Stuff. You know that, right? You're yeah, like, yeah, I know. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Right. They were probably on the inside. They were like, "Hey, you want to take me out?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, I would hate to do it, but if I had to do it, I would want to be the one to do it. Yeah. Well, bro, listen, mm-hmm. they seem like it was because, of course, spirits. cops beat, beat up black people, so it's like I would, you know, I would make sure that didn't happen, and I would take care of them. Huh? Hmm? What? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I think that's I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not nothing too serious. <laughs> Yeah. Do we nobody? Yeah, do we know? Do we know what it was for? Right. No, it ain't no bodies just laying in there. Yeah. 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 And they come out smiling like, "Hold on, this is weird." Yeah. That, Hopefully, that, it was nothing crazy. That's gonna be on the Christmas card. Right. <laughs> oh man, with the caption too. Yeah. Right. right. Oh, dude, that's. I think that's thumbs up, man. Yeah. That's thumbs funny. Up. Yeah, two thumbs up. Two yeah, thumbs yeah. up. That'll work. All right, yeah. well, guys, Andy will. That's all I got. Yeah, Will, thanks for coming through, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate everything that you do, dude. Likewise. Uh, Guys, make sure you follow Will on his Instagram account. Will be inspired. He puts out some of the best content online. Uh, He's he's getting more and more popular. I think you guys will really enjoy his stuff. And uh, support what he's got going on. Let him know what you what your your move your movement is and your charity is again. It's a will be inspired warriors fitness fund uh, to support military veterans and first responders and their families. Um, I'm will be inspired on Instagram or willbeinspired.com for more information. Yeah, guys, give him some so- support, dude. This is a good man who does a lot of good things, and uh, we got to support our people. So check him out, give him a follow, and uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. <laughs>